So we got a package. There we go, just like this. I'm gonna see if I can do this one a little quicker because I'm getting a late start. So I guess the natural consequence of um, something. Here's our non-anime thing, The Walking Dead Complete Sixth Season. Cool. First we got a Cross Ange Collection 2. It's episode 13 through 25. Ignore the computer rebooting in the background. Let's get these DVDs open. Okay, let's see. From what I recall, this series should be dubbed. The first half was dubbed. It's dubbed. That's region A. This is what the back of a Blu-ray looks like. There we go. Because, of course, we're going to check out the disc arts. It looks like uh, the disc ones share the same art. And the disc threes. So disc two is unique here on the DVD. Uh, this is Laughing Under the Clouds, which is a very intriguing looking series. Pretty sure those are guys. Which would make this... Well, I don't know. I guess if there's no girls there, it's not really reverse harem, is it? But it would mean that this is probably you know, found by Blood and Brotherhood. As you can see here, it's region A and B. It's, dubbed. it's a very curious looking series. These are probably the DVDs. Interesting, the Blu-ray the Blu-rays are an ominous black color. Next up we've got Hakuoki 2. This is movie 2, so I think a movie version of what happens in the TV series. Could be mistaken. Hmm. Oh, come on, plastic. It's being, um... A little annoying. There we go. Got it off. This looks like a lot of um, groups, events, locations, and notes. So these would be kind of translation y notey sorts of things, or maybe more like historical notes. Which could be kind of like translation notes. You can see the DVD version has the same thing. Uh, back side. It is. Dubbed Region A. I couldn't remember. Then we got the Heroic Legend of Arslan, which is a uh, kind of, I think kind of notable in that uh, there's an older release version sort of thing of this, and this is a newer series remake of that. I think there's at least something by the same name. I don't know how related they are, but I would guess pretty high because I think the other one's even called the Heroic Legend of Arslan. Let's see, look in the back. We've got regions A and B. We've got a dub on the inside. Ooh. This looks like probably a pretty good um, medieval sort of show. I'm trying to think if it feels like those are ever so slightly more common. I don't know. Uh, and then, of course, uh, I told you all I was going to get this. I guess I got this Viz Celebrates 30 Years coin thing. Viz Media. But then we got Sailor Moon Crystal itself, which as you can see is still in pristine... Oh. Excuse me! It's in condition. So, let's, um... Is there anything here we want to know? We can see it's Region A only. Let's actually begin with this. Okay, this does say Blu-ray and DVD on the side, as well as Toei and Viz. This is what the back looks like. I'm not sure what the contents look like. That says A, that's a Blu-ray. That says 2A Blu-ray. There we go, there's a 1 right there. It's really hard to see it against all this pink. And that's a DVD and it's Region 1. Huh, interesting. 
Oh, I see. Those are supposed to be like a crystal. Whereas the Blu-ray discs, well, that's a very crystal-like thing. I, I, don't, I don't know if I would call that crystal. Hmm. We got a booklet. Which looks like uh, very character design things. This is not a booklet. This is probably a bunch of postcards. Is her skirt higher than it was in the olden days? I don't know. The only way to really find out is to watch it. And it's kind of a high priority since I'm very curious about it. Anyways, remembering to close that aside, this week's anime DVD collection update. Okay, uh, I guess I'm trying to go quick here, so I'm just going to do all of this and... Well, I do, I do it kind of all in one take, just multiple one takes. Anyways, Absolute Duo, I finished it. Um, I'm not sure if it necessarily... There, there's something that felt a little off about it. So it's definitely not perfect. I'm just trying to think if I can nail what that off feeling was. I've been doing... Um, pretty much database related projects for the past weeks, so I've not done a lot of anime watching, so I've fallen behind on this. Um, I mean, like, I put off even watching anything until weekend sort of thing. Um, I don't know, I guess I probably commented last time, white haired girl with the red eyes, she kind of felt like her personality was maybe inconsistent with how she was initially portrayed possibly and there could be little things like that where I'm not quite sure how a character's motivation could have her convinced to need to do a certain thing so some of the motivations are kind of weird and some of the I guess that's maybe the issue with the series you kind of watch it and you only have the most vaguest idea of a direction and so maybe Continuing to watch it just doesn't feel like there's much purpose to it, per se. Um, Assassination Classroom. Uh, this one actually continues to be very interesting. This is the end of the first season. There is a second season. I don't know if it's currently airing or finished airing or what. But um, I'm looking forward to it, and it does rate pretty high. And, you know, the first season was actually really good. Um, coming to the end of the second half of this, it's... It's interesting because I think kind of at the very beginning of the series, it's more about, uh, I guess they call him Kuro-sensei. You know, I think it's like tentacle um, teacher, essentially. Uh, unless I'm mistaken. But it becomes slightly less about him because I guess the point of the series is a kind of the students themselves and kind of that sort of interaction. The kind of, it, it, I don't know. Maybe it's not exactly that. There, there's a weird mix there that just kind of works for some reason for it. Um, but I don't know if I want to say too much more because I'm not sure how I can do that without spoiling too much. Uh, I started. I decided to start watching Charlotte. I, of course, have a lot of options here and this pile's growing really fast again. More like I'm just putting off shrinking it. But, um, I don't know. I guess I was... Looking at a couple handful of things, thinking I should probably throw an Aniplex title on. Uh, this one actually turned out to be a good choice because I've been half paying attention to some stuff. But um, this is dubbed, so I, I've been able to watch it. Uh, I guess the most interesting thing about it, I would say so far, is our main character. He's actually not portrayed as all that good of a guy. Which is an interesting... Um, direction to take because you know you watch so many anime that kind of look like this and you're just used to the main character you know maybe he's super stoic and it's like well I'm really a bad guy but you know I'm a sniper with a heart made of gold or something like that you know like the world's best sniper except I only snipe the people that I think are really 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 bad because they punch old people or something weird like that um it's got a lot of, of physical slapstick that's kind of pain related to it, but I think it plays it very well. For some reason, it works out. I think it's because uh, I, the maker of this might be uh, the same person who made Angel Beats. And I've kind of commented there how some of the physical slapstick in Angel Beats worked out really well from a not really insulting me perspective. And this is, of course, a me thing, and y'all would have your different balance points. But I think, unlike Angel Beats, 
you know, like a lot of the Angel Beat stuff, I'm like, you know, conceptually, this is the most hilarious thing I've ever seen happen, but I don't know why it wasn't drawing out a chuckle or anything like that. It's, it was very strange because I've never been able to put my hand on that, and I don't think this one is quite as, um, it, I don't think it has quite the same problem, and it shows a lot of similarities with the design in that regard, but I can't help but think, it feels like this main character may be a tiny bit Haruhi Suzumiya-ish, which kind of feels a little in contrast with how her character is normally. Part of that could be the voice actress, it might be Haruhi's voice actor, again, English dub voice actor. I've not actually checked and I've been paying less attention to trying to figure that out and I've just been enjoying it. It's got it's gotten a couple of interesting twists so far. Um, I kind of wonder if without those it would fall very quickly into the meh category but you know overall it's trying a couple of different things that you usually don't see that much and it's interesting. Outside of that, um, I did of course finish Attack on Titan with uh, that friend I've been watching it with, and I think the next anime we're going on to is Serial Experiments Lane. Rewatched the first episode, I really love the first episode of that. Of course, I really love Attack on Titan too, that's a pretty good series. Um, and I don't know if we're going to be able to continue doing that because that series only gets more confusing the deeper you get into it, which is I think kind of what makes it fun. And for some reason, it's very captivating in the beginning, even though I've been kind of realizing certain things, like for 2001 A Space Odyssey, I guess this is maybe something like Stanley Kubrick, he kind of dances along a fine line in which I could understand some of that stuff being considered pretentious, where it's kind of like, you know, this is the classical music if you're somebody who enjoys this and loves this, you're at the height of human intelligence, possibly. I'm not sure if that's necessarily the case, but I think of that sort of thing, and I kind of wonder if uh, Serial Experiments Lane kind of has a kind of pretentious feeling to it as well. I'm not sure. Again, I was spending a lot of my time trying to think about problem-solving related stuff, so missed out here and there. Um, but I look forward to watching more of it. Other than that, uh, if I didn't talk about yeah, it's just uh, I'm playing around with databases sort of stuff and trying to put Pokemon data in a database and I want it to be a database that will at least function the way I want it to function. Namely, um, I guess the idea is I might be able to reuse it to go back to certain older generations for certain purposes. I want to use it for newer, specifically Battle Tower stuff. Of course, part of the trickiness of doing that is, uh, I don't know if I have the complete Battle Tower information I would want to put in there for every generation. Probably only 4th and 6th, so I might have to dig around a bit. And I might not even have all of 4th, because I might only have the Diamond and Pearl Battle Tower stuff and the, not the Platinum, but I'll continue playing around with it. At a minimum, I think it's a really good exercise in uh, learning more about databases and how to structure my data. Um, and maybe it's better if it's not a relational per se, I, I don't know, but I think the first thing to do is to kind of hit your head against those sorts of things. Like, for example, I did create something that for Pokemon data, and I want it to be able to say, oh, I'm uh, reinserting this data that I already did. not I'm using data very generically because I'm, I want to reuse it for multiple purposes. For example, uh, ch uh, Charizard is a Fire Flying in Generation 1 and a Fire Flying in Generation 2, so when it comes to adding Generation 2 data, I want to just have a blob that's everything and the database itself says, oh, well, I can just ignore these 100 or so things because they're the same as a previous generation, nothing changed. We just want to know what changed. For example, Magnemite and Magneton being uh, an electric type in the first gen, but then in the second gen becoming electric steel. Little things like that. We'll see other things later, such as when the fairy type gets introduced and a lot of Pokemon get changed in the fairy types. Um, or when Rotom's forms actually gain typing related to what Rotom is possessing. Things like that. And it'll be interesting to see how the data unfolds from there. I, I think it'll probably be not too much more notable than what is actually already noted on Bulbapedia or something like that. But I still want to do it. Maybe I'll try move sets, but, well, th everything the Pokemon can learn. Except that one I don't know if I have all the data going back every generation I would want to look at and... 
maybe locations would be nice, but I don't know if I need that. I think at a minimum, I'm at least looking for getting my battle tower data in there. So base stats, types, items, abilities, and yeah, beyond that, I'm not sure. I'll figure that out um, as that happens. But as you can tell, I'm getting into that. So uh, the anime watching is at risk of suffering as long as I continue needing to problem solve. But you know, it's been a good mix of stuff, so I've been able to watch actually an okay amount considering how little anime I watched last week. Anyways, it's a late night. Um, Y'all, have a nice week.